Thank you for, for being with us today. I'm Rosario Paps, Chief Product Officer at Horizon Labs and also founding team member of Horizon. I'm really excited. Uh, for me, it's uh, such a great moment to be here at uh, Horizon's ecosystem first summit, uh, ZenCon Zero, and especially very excited to talk about enterprise and Web3. So here uh, I have a great panel who has a great experience uh, ranging from legal to technology to media. So I'm really excited to hear your perspective about uh, enterprise and Web3, but before we start that, uh, if you could just please introduce yourself and uh, not only your background, but what specific area of uh, Web3 web and, and how that is uh, impacting what you're doing today. Hello. Yeah. Hi, um, I am Gerald Gallagher. Um, I am uh, wearing a couple hats. Primarily right now, I'm a legal advisor for a few uh, DAOs and then also Web2 uh, startups looking to make the journey into Web3. Um, so I'm a principal out of a small fund that I have, uh, Red Clay Capital. Um, and I'm excited to, uh, to talk about, I guess, that, that crossover. I think maybe the, the most interesting uh, aspect of it that we've covered today is probably, I, I think, the level of engagement you can have. I think brands and, and enterprises are really excited. There's a notion that you need to create something worth coming to because the incumbents are sort of already set up in their, their little kingdoms. So um, I'm excited about the scale that we're seeing uh, with some of these projects and some of, the, some of the Web3 companies that are being built right now. Great, thank you. How about you, Maria? Thank you. It should be on. It's on? Okay, apologize. Hi, Maria Chone speaking from Entity Data Italy. And currently we are working together with Horizon for some years ago, uh, trying to implement interesting things from the technology and not, not only point of view on blockchain. Uh, my role in my company is head of technology advisory and I have several experience uh, working in blockchain. Uh, for the enterprise client, for sure. Uh, initially, uh, as you can understand, as you can see around uh, in the market, the implementation of blockchain that is behind of Web3 uh, was very hard because the companies and the enterprises was uh, focused on private blockchains that now, today is not the right thing to do, uh, let me say. So now we are more focused on blockchain for public blockchains and the Web3 is a new challenge that is facilitating, uh, paradoxically, the implementation of this kind of technology because today Web3 is representing the new front end, let me say, for the company. So let's say uh, when you are in an uh, email service to provide to your client, your client is not asking you how is working the protocol behind of the email services, for example. Uh, instead, when, when you are explaining blockchain, they are asking you how, how is the protocol behind, uh, what, which is a node, all these kind of things. Uh, Web3, fortunately, is the new era, let me say, because you are able to explain in an easy way uh, the blockchain and all the technology behind, because you are working about functionalities more than technologies, and this is a very great difference to explain to your enterprise client. Thank you, first of all, for being here, for having us. Uh, my name is Kevin. I am uh, the founding partner and uh, one of the two partners of Reimagine Ventures. We are an early stage venture capital fund based in Israel and in London, and we invest in anything metaverse and Web3 related at the very early stages. Uh, our background is uh, more from the media, entertainment, gaming side. Um, but we do everything from infrastructure to uh, consumer uh, in, in, in that space as well. Uh, we have a bunch of enterprise investors that we consult with and uh, right now for the last six months also go around quite a bit talking to uh, multiple corporates about um, what's real, what's bullshit, what's, uh, what can you do, uh, where do people, what, do we, what do people do? in the metaverse and, and Web3 and, 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 and how can they enter and why is it relevant for them? Great, well, well thank you for uh, being here and providing your perspective. So Maria mentioned you uh, something that I've also observed. So I remember in 2018, 2019, there was this big push about these uh, private blockchains, 
right, and enterprises migrating there. And now we've seen uh, the opposite, which is, okay, these proof of concepts that they've done, uh, either dwindling, not hearing much uh, from these private blockchains, and now a resurgence of enterprises moving to using public blockchain networks, uh, which is, for us, really exciting uh, with Horizon, uh, because we have an SDK, we have a public blockchain, uh, which could be public or private, uh, but leveraging the public blockchain. So from your perspective, uh, and, and uh, we can feel free to jump in, whoever wants to uh, answer first. We don't have to follow a specific order, but from your perspective, what's the goal of, of the Web3 movement and how does it apply to enterprise or help enterprises? Well, um, so, uh, talking about enterprises for sure. So uh, what is my perspective based on experience working with enterprises is uh, they now have the opportunity to get the motivation uh, to do something different that they can understand. So uh, let's say the Web3 itself concept is helping the enterprises to enter in this new world. So it's something that was not happening in the last two or three years. Now the concept of Web3 is just the motivation to do something different from the business model point of view. Sure, so uh, I think it depends a bit on the industry. And um, so you have uh, banks or uh, players uh, from the traditional finance industry which are looking at DeFi and blockchain and uh, looking to move money quicker. Uh, and that, you know, JP Morgan is doing that a lot and very, very well. Uh, then you have companies uh, from the media entertainment or even the uh, CPG companies that you see a lot, the Nikes and the Adidas, and they're just trying to meet a new customer and try to understand what they're doing there and where they're hanging out and trying to create uh, that new engagement layer. Um, and then obviously we have gaming companies which are really uh, uh, smack in the middle of the entertainment market and gaming has become the number one form of media today. So there, um, the blockchain opens up new monetization models, uh, ownership models. So I think it depends a bit. Um, on what sector you're coming from for the enterprise. And um, to be honest, to be fair, when we speak with most of them, and, and I think maybe the finance and JP Morgan is a, a separate issue, but most of these entertainment CPG companies that are doing an NFT drop or, or doing something uh, marketing-wise, which makes sense right now, for them, what we like to say, they're really more in the Web 2.5 stage. They're not yet at the, you know, we're not there yet. We're not at the Web 3.0 yet. We really somewhere in the middle where they're dipping their toes in, where they're trying out projects. Um, it's a marketing expense, they're seeing how it goes, it, it gives them a little bit of a cool PR, and then, and then that's it, but there isn't that much long-term thinking behind it yet, and that hopefully that'll change uh, as, as we come along. Yeah, I, um, I'll take a, a slightly different perspective, I guess. So, so um, my connection, I guess, to, to Horizon and, and to Rob is I actually used to argue with Rob uh, about this when we were both at South Carolina. Um, and I was, I was looking at it from kind of a traditional venture uh, perspective and, and you know, he was very excited about Zencash and, and what they were launching. Um, and now I'm, I'm at Rob's conference in Milan. So, um, so I, th I think he won that argument, but I think that's, that's kind of what Web3 has to do as well because the goals of Web3, I think, are to kind of create change and to distribute wealth. And I don't think enterprises are that interested in sort of giving up that mantle. So um, I go back to, I think those were both great points, but, but I go back to the, the notion that you have to create something, a, a place where people want to go, where customers potentially are, right? Where innovative things are happening, I think. Um, the, the intellectual property space is, is a really interesting um, you know, aspect of, of, uh, of enterprise that Web3 is changing, but uh, you know, I, th I think that's kind of the, the desire is, is you know, looking at like an enterprise sales cycle, you know, uh, my first real job was, was Affleck Ventures, um, you know, investing in InsureTech, FinTech, uh, you know, healthcare. Those are all operating systems that are sort of at a minimum like 20 years old. Um, and so you have these 18-month sales cycles where, where people are trying to sell in and, you know, you're not necessarily just trying to meet the head of procurement and get like a new um, sort of integration. You're saying you need to fundamentally shift the way that you, you do business. And so 
um, I think that's, that's a, probably a bigger uphill climb um, than a lot of enterprises are ready for. So you really have to build that momentum sort of in your own garden and, and then have, have enterprises sort of come to you and want to do interesting things. Yeah, that's, that's a, a really good point. And uh, I'll have a, a follow-on question, which is uh, what, you know, for instead of pushing this technology onto enterprises, right, because that's, that's what it, it uh, feels like with, okay, we could do this with, with blockchain and blockchain is going to solve all of your problems. Okay, now let's let's take a step back and and see if there are existing Web two technologies, uh, and, and if you're going to supplant a a technology, and it must do something better, quicker, uh, cheaper. Have you guys seen anything uh, already in place or up and coming that will make this switch to uh, that's both seamless and profitable for enterprises, or is it too early yet? So obviously, I don't think it's too early to invest, right? Um, we have a 10-year time horizon for each fund, so uh, that, that gives us some leeway. Uh, I think in the DeFi space, uh, as I said, whether it's an enterprise uh, existing client like JP Morgan or whether it's a new player, um, Coinbase at Binance or somebody else, um, have shown that also company, new companies can come in and, and, and uh, innovate. So, I think there we have seen some really interesting use cases, um, and I expect a lot more. Uh, we have heard had a healthcare case. Uh, obviously, gaming, I'm hoping, will be a big on-ramp for more on the consumer side. On the consumer side, there's still some challenges around uh, onboarding and, and, and uh, getting people uh, to download and, 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 and get used to a wallet, but I think that'll change fairly quickly soon. So um, I see lots of potential. For, uh, for crypto, from, as we said, healthcare to gaming uh, and uh, uh, to marketing and media, right? I mean, if we look at sort of the classical example of Web 3.0 is to take the middleman away. Uh, and if you look at the advertising market, which uh, the gentleman earlier uh, knows very well, uh, Howard, that's, that's sort of uh, everybody making money off of you and you're the product, right? That's the Facebooks of the world. And, and hopefully that will, um, that will soon change where you have a lot more control over your data, where you know uh, what is, uh, where it's going and how much uh, you get in response. And, and with really the uh, idea of zero uh, knowledge proof, uh, the fundamental idea and the breakthrough there is that they will under, they will need, that the advertisers or the brands will get your piece of data that they need, but they won't know everything about you. And I think that holds a lot of promise for uh, a ton of startups and, uh, uh, to get active. And uh, I agree that the traditional strategics uh, will struggle to get into this uh, hopefully quick enough uh, so that there's an opportunity for companies and upstarts to, to grab some uh, market share. That's a really interesting perspective, and uh, you touched on zero knowledge. And w one of the things that we always, you know, from launching Zen Cash to Horizon Labs, um, the founding team members were very strongly uh, oriented towards privacy and individual privacy just because of the, the Web 2 uh, type of scenario of you're the product and we're, we're mining and getting the data from you. <clears throat> so with uh, zero knowledge, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a changing technology. And uh, yeah, we're very uh, excited about where that uh, takes us uh, going forward. But let's, let's take us because um, uh, in a slightly different direction with centralization versus decentralization, and this has been a, a topic uh, that we've been interested in. So a lot of your answers are selfish, selfish and, uh, and, uh, questions because uh, we, from a product team, want to really understand how, you know, perspectives from enterprises. So does it, does it matter, centralization versus decentralization? I, yeah, I, I have a lot of opinions on this. Um, I think it was actually it was really interesting um, what SEC Chairman Gensler said about a week ago um, about that if a, if a DAO was centralized enough to sign an engagement letter with, a, uh, with an attorney or a law firm, then it was probably too centralized. Um, and that's really problematic. And, and so on the opposite end of the spectrum, Something sort of worth doing doesn't just spring up out of the ground organically, right? Uh, things, things unfortunately just don't, you know, dolly and images aside, like don't, you know, create them themselves. 
Um, so there's been some interesting work done on this recently about sort of su sufficient de decentralization or, or exit to community, right? Where I, I think it takes sort of a very focused kind of initial team um, to get something, to have that conviction and get something off the ground. I know anyone who's dealt with a DAO um, has, has had challenges trying to find, you know, what does customer service look like in a, in a Discord, right? And it exists and it's, it's, it, it's possible, but, um, you know, it's challenging. Um, I think one of the opportunities that, that Web3, I guess, has is, is you can sort of um, create this project and then I almost call it sort of like a, a reverse IPO, right, where you're not floating 12% of your company, um, you're actually probably floating more like 88% of your company, right, and so, um, and, and sort of giving it to community, uh, you know, when you put the infrastructure in place to trust that it will continue to exist and to function. I, so I'm, I'm excited about some of the opportunities there, but I think we're really still kind of figuring it out. And I'm, I'm also thankful that there are so many great projects trying out different things, right? We need this sort of trial and error phase um, to figure out where we're headed. Well, uh, I wanted to add something so related to the corporate clients that they are not asking about decentralization versus centralization. Uh, because in many cases they don't know what is meaning, not f because they don't know about the concept, but because uh, it's needed more uh, training on what is meaning a service related to the centralization or a centralization way. So uh, in that case, what we are proposing to them is to see a hybrid model because they are very worried about what is their role that they can play in a decentralized way that they cannot understand very well because they are traditional enterprises maybe and they are working in a, in a way or a financial institution is uh, centralized by definition, you know. But uh, what, what you have to explain to them uh, in an easy way for sure is that we have also the hybrid uh, solution that we can put together. So uh, blockchains, are decentralized and banks are centralized, but uh, there is a way to work together because there are many business models that we can produce together. So I think there'll be, I think there's space for both. There'll be centralized businesses and there'll be decentralized businesses. Um, personally, I'm also excited about the prospect to see more decentralization. If I look at um, Web2 to, web to open companies and uh, shareholder structures, uh, you know, whether it's Facebook or Snap or anybody else, there's really uh, one or two people running the entire ship and um, shareholders not having much influence or power. So I think that might shift and hopefully will shift. Uh, I think it'll require a new type of founder um, to really uh, let go a little bit. But um, it's um, as uh, you know, you can really uh, manage that uh, depending on how much, how many tokens you sell and, 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 and how you structure that cap table. Um, but I don't think everything will be decentralized. There's still um, often a good reason in highly regulated, com you know, highly regulated affair company, uh, industries or in, in sensitive industries to have a centralized team uh, around. So it'll be, it'll be both. Yeah, uh, that's really interesting. And, and uh, when we first launched, we, we were focused on full decentralization. Along the way, we said, okay, we, we need to have a, a, a semi decentralized uh, solution as well in the market, so also started focusing on, on that market area. So let's just, for the, the last question, uh, and especially, I'd love to hear all your perspectives, but especially because we have a lawyer here. Uh, what We always hear about the regulation, and uh, what are some of the roadblocks that you see, or s some challenges that we see along the way? Oh, man. Um, all eyes on you. Yeah, there's... Uh, there are a lot, I think, so it's interesting that we're in a time where two things are happening. One is, I think Web3 is well capitalized enough and is starting to understand the game well enough that uh, there's a role for some of these companies, whether it's like, you know, FTX spending, you know, a billion bucks on, on regulatory change or, um, you know, something like Blockchain Association or, you know, potentially some, a PAC, something like that. Um, Web3 has to have a, a voice at the table. I think that's, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, is I think a lot of these companies that we're trying to operate sort of in the gray or in the dark are actually just looking for clarity now. They're, they're seeking clarity. The problem is 
Um, I think you have enforcement bodies. The, the fundamental problem is that uh, nobody knows what crypto is, and so everybody wants to regulate it. And everybody wants some kind of uh, you know, responsibility over that, whether, whether it's the CFTC or you know, the Fed coming in to start the conversation about stable coins or the SEC saying that everything is a, is, is a security. Um, you know, we're relying on a test uh, that's, I think, what is it, 80 years old now, the, the high test for, for whether or not you know, something is a security. So um, I think just proactive legislation is, is needed. The, you know, sort of the well-capitalized Web3 companies having a voice at the table. I'm very excited to see how this, the Ripple suit turns out. Um, I think that probably will not look like a win. Um, none of this is legal advice. Um, I, I think that probably will not look, or financial advice, um, probably will not look like a win um, you know, for the SEC. And then I think also um, it was a huge deal for the legal community over this summer where uh, the SEC sort of retroactively deemed nine tokens being traded on Coinbase uh, securities almost as a footnote in an insider trading case, right? That was, that was a huge shock, I think, to the legal community. And it's, it's very encouraging to see Coinbase step in and say, no, we're actually, you know, we're, we're very particular about our, our listing process. We don't list securities, we list commodities. Um, and so they're going to the courts on, on behalf of, um, you know, some of these protocols. So um, I think that's very encouraging. I don't know what the timeline looks like, but, you know, I do know I would call it sort of earlier this year, I called this summer sort of the summer of precedent. You know, we're getting a lot of, a lot of things figured out in the courts right now. And so, you know, hopefully we'll get some, some clarity out of that. Great. Well, thank you. I think this is uh, time up, but thank you for uh, wrapping up with, uh, with that response. Uh, thank you all, and let's enjoy Aperitivo. Thank you. Thank you.